In this video, we're gonna talk through five specific things that are gonna help you launch and grow your no-code app. Now, if you want to become a successful no-code app entrepreneur, stick around until the end. You need to know every single one of these. Hey, it's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then subscribe to this channel for new videos to help you every single week. All right, so some of these things are technical, some of them are not, but all of them are gonna help you. So let's jump right in. All right, number one, make sure you are solving a problem that A, people have, and B, you know that they will pay to solve. That means that problem has to have some level of severity it's causing pain points within a person's business or in their lives. And two, there is some sense of urgency that they have in order to solve it. In other words, they are going to pay to solve it faster than to let it kind of fester over time. Now, this might sound really obvious, but I can't tell you how many times I have seen people try to solve a problem that maybe people have, but that they aren't going to pay in order to get rid of. So make sure you're solving that problem that people have, but that they are most importantly going to pay in order to solve. Now, a good way to validate this is to see whether they're already paying to solve the problem in another way, and your solution ideally will provide an alternative solution that meets some needs that just aren't currently being met. Number two, choose a no-code tool that is going to allow you to solve that one problem that you have identified. Now, again, this might sound obvious, but there are some caveats here. Now, we personally like to use Bubble for building apps, but you need to find a tool for you that is going to allow you to solve that single problem you have identified. Now, here's the caveat. You don't have to identify a no-code tool or platform that is going to allow you to solve that problem at scale. Now, bonus if it does, that's great. But if it's going to take you longer than a few weeks to do your due diligence necessary that's going to confirm for you that the platform is going to allow you to solve the problem at scale at some potential unknown point in time, Right? If it's going to take you longer than a few weeks to confirm that for yourself, then just move forward with the platform that's going to allow you to solve the single problem now. Because I don't want you to unintentionally delay the development of your app and therefore the launch of your app and the monetization of your app just because you really just have analysis paralysis. That's what happens when people are trying to find a platform that is going to serve every single one of their needs at some unknown point in time, assuming they're going to have certain needs, right? There are so many unknowns that you can't have black and white answers that are going to allow you to make 100% confident decisions right now. So if you find a platform that you think is going to solve your later needs, great. If you have those later needs, you're already set. But if it's going to take you too long to find that, then just build the app you need right now to take that first step. Get the users, solve the problem, start to monetize. Then you can work on the scale part afterwards. That's how every business works. Number three, you need to spend time in three specific areas. The first is development. You need to spend time learning how to use your no-code tool or platform like Bubble, for example, correctly. There are always going to be 10 ways to achieve a single outcome. And more often than not, nine of those ways are going to be incorrect for you and your use case and your app. Okay, so you have to learn how to use your chosen platform correctly so that you can build your app correctly. The second area you need to spend time in is with strategy. Now I'm talking about development strategy. Platform aside, ignore the tools for a second. You have to spend time learning and understanding development strategy and best practices because you can understand how to use a tool perfectly, but if you can't couple that with development strategy and best practices, then you're not going to build a very functional app or it's gonna take you a really long time or it's gonna be really hard for you to manage, right? So spend time in the strategy department as well. And then the third area is in promotion. Now promotion can mean a lot of different things, but it, it kind of comes down to this. If you are not talking about your app 
no one is going to talk about your app. Okay, so a lot of people hold off on talking about their app publicly or really trying to spread the word until their app is either just about ready to launch or after it is already ready to launch. And that is such a big mistake. Start talking about your app now. It doesn't matter if you haven't even started development. Maybe you haven't even found the tool or the platform you want to use. Start talking about your app now. Ideally, start talking about the problem that your app is going to solve. Start talking about the outcome it's going to enable, right? There are so many things to talk about, but if you are not talking about your app, nobody will. Number four, you need to find or build some sort of accountability throughout this process. If you do not have accountability, you are going to build too much onto your app too soon, and you are going to launch too late. I can guarantee that with 99.9% .9 certainty because I've seen it happen so many times. Accountability can come in lots of different ways. It can be as simple as you having a written plan with specific milestones and goals that you actually track and use every single day. It can involve being in peer groups where you actually meet and talk with people. Uh, ideally face to face and you talk about your progress or maybe lack thereof. It can involve working with coaches and mentors. We work with clients and provide accountability or hold them accountable. And here is what it all boils down to. If you do not have a way to see or to prove to yourself every single day that you either are or are not making progress, then it is going to be hard for you to make that progress. So even something as having a simple written plan can do a lot. Having certain steps that you need to take in order to hit certain milestones and having certain milestones in place that will lead you toward launching your app, monetizing your app, leaving the, the job behind that you don't want and, and building this new app based business, right? If you literally track that every single day and you see that you're not taking those specific steps, then you know, it's proving to you you're not making the progress that you need to make and that can help hold you accountable. If you are meeting with peers and you are forced to verbally say to them, I did not accomplish this step in the past week that I said I was, nobody wants to say that. So you're likely going to be more driven to actually accomplish that or if you're sharing it with a group, you know, move forward and accomplish it thereafter, right? The accountability is so important. Make sure you create it for yourself in whatever way is gonna work best for you. Number five, share a launch date and get real with yourself. So I want you to decide where you're going to be reaching out to your prospective users and I want you to share a launch date with them. And then second, secondary to that, I want you to get real with yourself. So you need to set a realistic time frame for your app's development and launch. So you might be really inspired to get your app out there and you might set a launch date a month from now and think to yourself, I'm just gonna do whatever it takes to get there, but that's gonna be next to impossible and you're gonna be just like overloaded with stress and that's, that's not how we want this to happen. So you wanna set that launch date but you wanna, you wanna be real with yourself. So give yourself a realistic timeline. Look at your schedule. Do you have a full-time job? Do you have kids? You know, what else is going on? And how much time can you realistically commit to working on your app, to focusing on the development, the strategy, the promotion, right? Every single day. So be realistic with yourself, but also don't be too generous on the time frame to where you inevitably end up building too much and launching too late, right? We don't want that either. So be realistic with yourself. And to add to that, it would be irresponsible of me not to say that building and launching an app is going to take time, it's going to take work, it will take consistency, and it is going to involve you putting pressure on yourself, especially if you have that full-time job, the family, right, your life. Anything that you are trying to build and launch, any venture you're trying to pursue on the side of everything else, 
is going to be hard. It's just plain and simple, right? So that's why I say be real with yourself. You don't want to put too much on your plate to where you just have no chance and then it, you know, you just feel really badly about it. But you also don't want to give yourself such a, a long time horizon that nothing actually gets done. So create the pressure in a good way and know that it's going to take work. But the thing that's going to keep you moving forward is knowing that on the other side of this, wherever you are trying to get to, again, whether it's leaving that job you don't like or scaling your existing business or controlling your lifestyle, wherever it is you're going, if you are driven enough to continue pushing towards that, then you will get there, right? And that that outcome is going to outweigh the amount of work and that pressure that you feel time and time again. So make sure you have that, that why that you are pushing towards because that's going to keep you moving through this process. Now, these five things just barely graze the surface. And if you want to become a no-code app entrepreneur, then head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop where we will take a deep dive with you through all things app entrepreneurship, including actually starting to strategize about your app, create a roadmap, dig into the tools, learn some development. So if that's where you're headed, then go to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to join in on that and take these next steps to becoming a successful app entrepreneur.